everybody, and welcome to Generation Dan. I am one of your hosts, Dean the Genic Marvel, and today we are talking about the circle of life and how it continuously fucks us all. Okay, uh, are, are you gonna are you gonna lift Caleb up over a cliff and just be like the circle? Of life. I could do that. I'm, I'm big enough. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. He's very thin, so I'm like, I'm pretty sure I could do that, and then give him a little jiggle while he's up there. And go, ah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, the Gen Xer. I'm Atlas Novak. I'm your millennial. <laughs> How's it going, folks? I'm Caleb McDuff bringing the Zoomer action once again. And our guest today, uh, he is the co-owner of Dow Comedy Studio in Los Angeles, California. Welcome to Chris Oliver, everybody. Hello. How's it going? Are you recording from inside Dow right now? No. Oh. I'm, a- I'm actually sitting in my bed. Gotcha. Oh, that's cool. I love the posters behind it. I... I didn't get to see the expansion project because I got Omicron right when you guys were doing your party, and I, uh-huh. I just missed it. So for all I know, that's what it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, it it looks fucking great. Um, yeah. When you come out there, yeah, it's it's really looking good. Mm-hmm. Um, nice. Bobby put some kind of uh, panels up on the wall of the 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 main showroom um, was that the original one that guys had, really, or the yeah one? the original one okay yeah that's funny because oh. a lot of the clubs up here so i'm in toronto chris and up here yeah. a lot of the clubs have done the same thing is now as soon as they started opening up everyone had a different interior everybody has renovated up here and i'm like Man, you guys are bad at just taking time off i think everyone's <laughs> just like listen now that we're closed what we're gonna do is change everything and you're like yeah. Or we could just, you know, relax. <laughs> I, th- I think it's the sort of thing where, like, there's this expectation for everyone to be to never be idle. To just be like, oh, if yeah. we're not going to see you for a while, we got to, like, flip everything around. <laughs> well, that's what I keep thinking, you know. Uh, I'm Everything is so terrible right now. But, like, the more i think about it the more i realize this everything's always been terrible but if you stayed busy you didn't really think about it you know yeah and so i've gone the other way i'm like i'm going to put everything on pause until i can figure out why it should be good and i'm like no listen i'm going to appreciate the goodness in everything except atlas atlas thinks i hate everything uh but yeah am i am i that far off do you know i'm not that far off like I do at my very core, but at the same time, I'm like I'm learning to pretend extremely well. You know, so I should get an Oscar for the times that people are like, "Man, you're such a good listener." And I'm like, "Do do 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 do." In my mind, right? Like, <laughs> I just I just noticed the Skeletor uh, background you got going on there. Yeah, that's yes. very nice. It's my uh, life live, mantra. Laugh, love. Live, live, laugh, laugh, love, he man. <laughs> he man. <laughs> So, uh, again, uh, there's a Zoomer here. Uh, <laughs> you're so a little confused you guys talk about old people stuff. So if you could just, like, translate, like, just periodically throughout, so, like, maybe subtitles or something. Everything you've experienced up until now has been new. Mm-hmm. Get ready for everything to happen again. Yeah. <laughs> oh, again? I'll tell you that right now. Where you're going to oh. listen. Realistically, at your age, it's also going to be a fact of like, hey, now I'm shitting myself again. Oh, no. How did this happen? That's called alcoholism. <laughs> it will pass. You know, little things like that. They're going to just come full circle. I went through that phase in high school. I'm not worried about that. <laughs> That's not a problem for me. Caleb was way cooler than me in high school. Well, I mean, it, everyone it, it, was it, cooler it, than you in high school. Let, let, less the alcoholism and more the shitting myself. That was the real problem. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Got it. That was that was the issue that I ran it. That was just like mozzarella cheese sticks, like overdose, probably. <laughs> well, that will do it. Yeah, it's 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 the fried well, cheese. Lactose, that's and, fair. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, have I told this story on stage before? I probably have, but I shit myself in high school and I just like basically had to deal with it for like a period of like four hours. And it was it was terrible. You had to walk it, around with shit in your pants for I had to walk hours? around with shit in my pants, yeah. You didn't throw the underwear out in the dumpster or something? Or? Well, dude, the problem was is that it wasn't like it's not when you shit your pants, it's not like a log. Like it's not a clean, like this is not a readily like you know This is a man that wears boxer shorts shit. and not boxer briefs and I wear boxer briefs. Okay, so there there should have been some capture. 
There was a little bit of capture, but there was also <laughs> a little bit of drippage, and that's where I'm going to leave it. We can move on. Yeah, okay. Okay. If your right. boxer briefs are so tight that you, they could capture it, mm-hmm. you need to go up a size. Just going to say that. Like, they, no, no, but I'm um, like, they shouldn't be capturing everything in there like it's sealed in. That's I, not, you know, that defeats the purpose uh, of moving from tidy whities But I like my undies looking like I'm smuggling like marbles inside of a small sack. That's what I like. That's the style that I'm going for. Because every time I take die. my pants off, it's like you got a little sack of gobstoppers, and it's very exciting. The way okay. you position that is you say, I am committed to no false advertising in my life. You, what you see None. is exactly what you're getting. I, I, no is, illusions, no, no contouring, illusion. no contouring. <laughs> okay. Yeah. We, we should stop giving people the wrong mental image. Let, let's ask Chris <laughs> some questions, shall we? That's okay. a great idea. Let's yeah. All right. So starting off with our usual uh, it is, what is an embarrassing song from your playlist? My playlist is fucking immaculate. Man, immaculate? You can't... Immaculate. Um, okay. Normally, my my answer to this question would be like a, a whole lecture about how you there should be nothing, no such thing as an embarrassing song or movie. You just like what you like. Don't have guilty pleasures. But, Okay. This is not literally on my playlist, but here's an, a song I like that I've always felt kind of embarrassed about. It's a little corny. Uh, is the Cheryl Crow's song. All I want to do is have some, have some fun. fun. Yeah. I like that sure. song. Yeah. It's a good it's song. Re- That's a really good song. That's not embarrassing, dude. My mom played that like when I was coming out of the womb. <laughs> I don't know. I guess when it came out, it just seemed like such a VH1 kind of adult contemporary mm-hmm. song. And and then with that bubblegum chorus, and just everything about it just seemed like I shouldn't like this. But it has this really great kind of evocative lyrics of mm-hmm. life in L.A. sitting at a laundromat or a bar or whatever is going on in that song. And it has this that nice warm uh, slide guitar sound. This is a really nice song. That's pretty. That, was that? I guess that the, the, no, the answer wasn't very funny. <laughs> it doesn't matter. No, it's accurate. Funny or not? It's, yeah, Alice is yeah. never funny. Don't worry about it. No, it's cool. <laughs> I, I like how you mentioned that. It kind of brings up like life in L.A. because I kind of fantasize about living in L.A. because I live in Denver and we're just doing like a really bad L.A. impression that's way more wet and cold. So uh, I get to kind I, of like fantasize a little bit. I thought the point of Colorado was it's a dry cold. That's what people in LA say when they're like, God, it's hot. Well, it's a dry heat. So, well, I mean, when it gets cold, like, yeah. and the snow is everywhere and it's slushy and it's in your socks and you can, like, kind of squish it around, then it's a wet cold. Oh, yeah, okay. It's pretty wet. Yeah. I don't think a wet cold and you being wet are the same thing. I'm wet and cold. It's a wet cold. So I'm <laughs> upset about it. It's, We're not having I mean. a dry January here in, in any sense. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, it, it's been the rain's been pretty good, and of course, every single person in LA, hey, it's raining. Well, we needed it, so you know. I reckon we did every fucking time. <laughs> See, yeah, this I is can't. why I hate people. Okay, this is why I hate people. They're walking around going, "Well, we needed it." Who the fuck do you think you are going to control the weather? Say what we need. Here we go. LA playing God again. Oh, wow. Should, LA with I, I their moral say that superiority. The Northridge earthquake. Well, we need it. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> more accurate. Like, listen, we're just getting too stressed. Yeah, we've, we've, we've been horrible. Horrible things are happening. Let's all get a little shake up, literally, okay. and then try and move on. It's a reset. That's fair. What? I want to feel old? The the Northridge earthquake was about a month before I was born, <laughs> and the uh, the the hospital I was supposed to be born in was too fucked up by it, and I had to be born in a different one. Dan, so oh, like no. everybody like got the news about the earthquake like on like like beepers or like what? Like how did you find out about it? Those of you that were there, <laughs> Caleb, I, I was sirens. <laughs> yeah, I think it was just the thing where they were like, hey. Mr. and Mrs. Novak, uh, there's currently a light hanging from a ceiling, and like a bunch of the floors are all fucked up. So we we can't so. you can't have your kid here. Go go somewhere else. That's what I, I know when I happens. when I moved here. We moved here in '97, and I worked at a, a hospital in Santa Monica that still Saint had John's? like they no, uh, no. Uh, UCLA. Okay. Um, yeah. 
but they like they had still had like like there were stairways that were still waiting to be retrofitted or whatever from from uh Northridge. And you know, you don't you can't use that stairway because it's fucked up for it's fucked up. Yeah. Cause I think I think what a lot of the buildings in the LA area, they were built more rigidly where there wasn't space between girders or something so when the ground shakes it like moves with it instead of having to just take all of it and then it crumbles uh -huh. um, yeah that's what i was told anyway well that's smart so, if they did that yeah or i think that's what a lot of buildings have done after that because now they know yeah <laughs> no one here is a civil engineer yeah. or okay. anything so none of this is okay <laughs> my favorite thing is talking to people <laughs> outside of la and they're like, well, LA must be terrible. There's earthquakes all the time. Like, they imagine that it's just a bunch of Pokemon doing the move earthquake over and over and over again. And it's usually <laughs> just like, hey, there was an earthquake. And then I was driving or asleep, and I didn't even know it happened. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> when I first moved out here, they seemed to happen a lot more frequently or a lot more noticeably. And then after mm -hmm. a, a couple of years, it, yeah, as most of the time I see someone post it on Twitter. I'm like, oh, there's an earthquake. Really? Yeah. <laughs> see, I've I've been in an earthquake twice in my life, and both times I was kind of like, hmm, that's weird, but whatever. Like the one was the it happened in the on the Appalachian Ridge out here because I'm mm -hmm. in Toronto, right? So it happened, and it was about it's like 500 kilometers, 600 kilometers away where it yeah. originated from and i felt it i was talking with a guy in my office and all of a sudden we both kind of went and i was like you felt that too he's like yeah i did i'm like yeah that's pretty fucked up and i was like hold let's figure out what that was and i was like oh okay there was just an earthquake okay good. somebody died not my problem we're good somebody died <laughs> yeah it's like yeah well it's far away i'm like sure. i don't care uh and the other time i was in greece and i woke up in the middle of the night to take a piss I come back out and I was sharing a bedroom with my uh, one of my brothers, and it was kind of like we had the windows open because it's, it's nighttime, it's beautiful, right? So it's like the moon shining in. So I just see him start like shaking back and forth in his bed, and I'm like, Do you have a way to I'm that? like, yeah. no. I was like, so. well, that's fine. More money in the end for me. Fuck him. So yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. See, I thought this was gonna go somewhere where like you were spooning and then he started to jiggle and then you got confused as to like the intent behind the the situation or something. That's kind of where I thought maybe that was going to go. I'm not that Greek there, Caleb. Yeah, so like we were, uh, we were leaning really against the shirts off, and we could feel our chest hairs pressing against each other. One of them started uh, to jiggle. Yeah. And then There's we got all tangled up, and we had to... in the story. Uh, oh. the, the only time it's been scary for me was I was at the dentist, and then they're like, all right, earthquake, stand up. I'm not doing this with tools in your mouth. Get get up. And I'm like, okay. And then that was it. <laughs> there was the, fir the, the very first night we moved here. Mm -hmm. There was one at like four seventeen in AM. Yeah. And like we kind of woke up. Wait, what what was that? What, and, and like as soon as it was over by the time we were conscious enough to know whether it was an earthquake or not. Mm -hmm. And then the next day our friend came up by and was like, Oh, did you hear feel that earthquake last night? And then the next night, uh, the second night it happened like almost the exact same time again, like four seventeen AM. And this time we went, Oh yeah, that was definitely an earthquake. I, I know it for sure. Now I know what they feel like, mm -hmm. but yeah, they're not like a big deal. We, we, we got tsunamis today. Oh yeah. We did. There, there was an underwater oh, yeah. volcano eruption. So the entire yeah. West coast and like Alaska has a, uh... <laughs> My my niece order. apparently had to be evacuated uh, this morning. Damn, up in Bay Area, I'm not sure exactly where she. Oakland, I think. Yeah, well, I, rem I remember when there was the Fukushima one, and they were like, "There's a tsunami that's heading towards California," and then all they just showed the camera live, and it's like all these people were like, "Let's watch the tsunami! It's gonna be great!" And it's like. <laughs> yeah, we don't deserve nice things. That's yeah. <laughs> and then by the yeah. time it gets there, it's like a. That's it. Yeah. yeah. It's I mean, you gotta get content there. wherever you can, dude. It's Los Angeles. It's, it's fucking brutal out here, man. There was a, a, a Katie showed me the Impractical Jokers movie uh, last night, and, and there's a scene where one of them has a two by four, and he's threatening the other three. He's like, "We like he's threatening him," and then he goes to like push a bunch of stuff off the table they're standing near. Is like, "I'm fucking serious," but he just goes like, "Eh," 
that's what the wave <laughs> like by the time it reaches that land. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> well, you know, well, we certainly we've learned one thing. It's that these things can like we get false alarm, false alarm, false alarm over and over for years, and then suddenly the real like eventually there is going to be a, another big earthquake here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Eventually, yeah. eventually there is probably like going to be a tsunami that actually hits LA and flattens it. I don't know. Mm -hmm. So next question. <laughs> uh <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> All right. Uh, I'm an adult. You can't stop me. So, like, what was an example of something that you do that is arguably bad for you or just weird, but you're, you're a grown-up? Who gives a shit? Yeah. Uh, well, you know, you, you go get donuts at, at midnight, right? Uh, stuff like that. Maybe, I'm, I'm not, like, a, a wild person. So, like, an answer, like, uh, drink another cup of coffee at, at six in the afternoon. Because, hey, whoa, whoa. maybe it'll keep me up all whoa. night, dog. Yeah. Yeah. Let's settle down. Let's settle down. <laughs> I can just live with it. You have to be up till 11 p.m. Oh, it's shit. crazy. Yeah. You know what, Chris? I hate you because that's exactly what I'm going through right now. Where I'm like, oh, I'll have a coffee at four o'clock. And I'm like, I'm not going to go to sleep until like way later. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, yeah, it's fine. I've, I've been in, I've been embracing it. But at the same time, yeah, no, like I have like coffee right here. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm going to be up way too late today. Right before the quarantine started, I uh, drank co uh, coffee and some, some peats. We had, had a work meeting. Uh, in the evening, so I, I got a, a cup of Pete's coffee and drank the whole thing during the meeting. And then, like, I literally did not sleep that fucking night, and I had to work oh. the next day. Oh my god! Uh, and it, 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 I was in such bad fucking shape. Um, but you, you can't be like, I'm. You can't like just take the day off and like don't have to. Well, you know, I like working. I had to work. I had to teach my three-hour class, and yeah. you know, then I'm done. But nah. you can just give them a project, bring in a TV, be like, "All right, we're watching manage. a movie tonight." Uh, no, we're watching. <laughs> we're watching Balto Three: yeah. The Wings of Change. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 throw it. Listen, we're gonna hit a classic, The Princess Bride. Here, just leave yeah. me alone. No, Watch it twice. Good. It's a great movie. Watch it backwards. I need, it's I need to download a soundboard that just says like. Talking about old guy shit. Uh -oh. <laughs> talking about old guy shit. I think Balto. I, Wait, Balto which one is that? Was, 90s, oh, but... is it Balto that, that that's the, the old the, guy? I've never heard that word in my life. The whole thing. <laughs> the Honestly, whole thing. it that because that's so young for me. Like I have no idea yeah. what the fuck Balto is. I I I I know it's an animated film about a dog. I imagine. Yeah. So it, it's a dog, and he's got to run some medicine. In 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 the cold part of the you're world. gonna cry. That's what it is. Yeah, it's about it, a dog it's and it's gonna movie. make you cry. 100%. The third one was when I was in high school. I went over to a girl's house and she showed me that movie because she tried to show me the first one. I'm like, I haven't seen it, and she's like, Oh well, here's the third one. It's probably good. It was terrible. Uh, and yeah. I stayed through the whole thing because I because I like that girl. And then I didn't get anywhere, and I just had to watch Balto Three: The Wings of Change. <laughs> So what I'm kind of <laughs> gathering is it's kind of like if that yeah, Clint that's, Eastwood that's movie about him, one. if yeah. that Clint Eastwood movie about him being a drug mule and Old Yeller kind of mashed together, is that kind of what it is? No, not even close. Oh, not even close. Okay. That sounds like <laughs> okay. a better movie than Balto Three: The Wings of Change. You know what? <laughs> this is where I learned like people were like, "Oh, you should watch Old Yeller." Mm -hmm. Absolutely not. Old I couldn't watch Lassie when up. I was a kid. I'm like, no man, it's no, sad. I can't watch you know what? It. Yeah, no thanks. The way to do it is if you watch Old Yeller and then you watch Cujo like back to back and then you feel less bad about Old Yeller. Ah, you're like this is what alternate universe where they let Old Yeller live. He did Cujo. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, well, what yeah, if I you can't watch anything out? where they're mean to dogs? I can't. I think there's a literal website it. where you can look up if a dog dies in a movie. It's yeah. like, does the dog die? I don't even like to see like dogs that. being sad. Oh. No. Yeah, when it like people, this is this is a new trend where people are like, oh, uh, an owner and a dog were reunited after six months when they got separated during a flood. I'm like, I can't watch that. I'm like, for the next yeah, half the dog, hour, the, anything the dog that happens, got separated like, during a flood, that's terrible. 
Yeah, but so then they got reunited and everyone's crying, and I'm like, I can't watch that. And I'm like, just, just, I don't need that in my life. I don't need that kind even, of. Yeah, even the emotion, the even the yeah. the positive emotion of them being reunited is too fucking much for me. Yeah, if somebody brings me a glass of water, I'm like, thank you for knowing what I need. Like, I'm, <laughs> I, that's it. I'm a mess. I'm like, I can't. I'm like, no, no, no. no we're gonna stay. Like, we're gonna I've... stay. Top line. I'm not. No, no, no. I've sadness. spent years like tamping down my emotions so that I don't feel anything if you just show me something with a dog and it's yeah. all gonna come out i can't take it listen that dam has holes in it and it is breaking apart okay <laughs> caleb you'll find out you know what you're like look at these fucking losers with their emotions they're not <laughs> real men you're gonna see you're gonna hit an age and all of a sudden you're gonna be like oh my god this hang is on. what it's like when dubs hang on dude you're talking to a zoomer here Okay, do you understand that emotions are our entire identity, dude? I got a shirt yeah, button but your all the way up to the neck backwards. with flowers yeah. on it. I got a bead bracelet with essential oils on it. You think I'm not in touch with my feelings, Dino? Oh, no, no. What I'm saying is your feelings are completely backwards and upside down, sir. You guys are pretending feelings. At my age, they are emotions, okay? They are just, they are wreaking havoc on my daily experiences. Feelings as a performance art is just the Zoomer mantra, I guess. Yeah, but you guys are like, I feel happiness. And you're like, that's not oh, happiness, you asshole. That's not, that's not how you display happiness. It's just it's backwards. Everything's weird. I like I how don't... Caleb's got like a beautiful flower bracelet with the central oils. I just have a bracelet that's like, hey, man, if he has a seizure, don't call an ambulance. He's fine. <laughs> like, just, just pull him out of traffic. He'll be fine. <laughs> kind of, yeah. It's, it's not as cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's still essential. It's essential. Just not oily. Yeah. You know what else is cool? It, it, it is, like poop. is gross. Uh, <laughs> Bring it a full circle, dude. Bi- That's a callback. Gross. All right. Also cool is feeling like an adult for the first time. Yeah. Which leads to <laughs> what was the first time you felt like a man or like? <laughs> Okay, you I know don't what? think That's that different. those two are the same. That's yeah, different. Those are... No, I mean like the first time you, you, you like had to had to you know be an adult. Felt like an adult. Like an adult. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I get so sorry. My dog is is like being very aggressive right now, wanting me to pet her. Um, well, now we have to see the, the first dog. time I, I felt like a dog. I I guess it's you want to see the dog. Kind of. Yeah. Of course, I want to see the dog. She's she's. Here's Muggles. Here's your puppy. Cover. Small oh, horse. Oh, hello. It's a small horse. Is that oh. what you said? Oh, no. I thought it was a lot bigger because the camera was a lot closer. Oh. I was like, that's humongous. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a little pun. I'm just showing, showing the yeah. dogs here. And there's BB. Oh. Um, yes, you you're surrounded by dogs. See, her. I, I uh, saw it like Voltron, like it was here, one I'm, continuous dog when it was like three. <laughs> I'm handing him dog. off to my wife here. Hey guys. <laughs> hi, Bobby. Bobby says hi. <laughs> She'll be back. Says, Atlas says hi, Bobby. <laughs> Hope you feel better, Atlas. Thank you. <laughs> says thank you. Um, so, first time you felt like okay. an adult. The first time yeah. I felt like an adult. Well, when I, I guess when I started teaching, uh, th- in fact, not when I started teaching. There was like a year and a half where I was working my office job in the day and teaching at night. So when I quit the office job, and I was I no longer had any like shitty job you Mm -hmm. know that i didn't want to do that's when i felt like an adult and that was when i was like 40. um (laughs) although chris you're making (laughs) me feel uncomfortable man because i did the same thing (laughs) (laughs) except you know i started doing comedy which i'm like well this has been a horrible experience but hey (laughs) also when i was uh when i went to college and like I realized, oh, I could just like fuck off my, you know, neglect my studies, and no one's gonna give me shit about it. <laughs> and that's obviously that was the wrong decision, but but just the fact that I yeah. could do it, I did it. That's what I did. Yeah. And I was like, this this is just great. I'm an adult. No <laughs> one's like giving me shit about this decision I'm making. Oh man. I think a lot of young people go through that when they go to <coughs> go to college. They'll just like 
oh, there's not going to be a mom who yells at me for not doing my homework. All right, yeah. I'm going to go completely nuts. And then those are the people who like Woo. don't make it. Yeah. Yeah. I had, That's correct. I had, I had a friend who uh, was like valedictorian and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And her first year uh, at university, like nothing. She did nothing. And like she literally just stayed in her, her dorm room and just fucked off. And you're like, well, that seems kind of fucking useless. But, you know, I guess when you're that tightly wound, I get it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I guess if you're the one skill she had not learned was how to just do, you know, motivate yourself. Yeah. yeah well, yeah, it's which I understand, like, yeah. everybody likes to fuck off every once in a while. It is a great feeling, like even calling in sick from work. When you do love your job, you're just like, man, I just don't want to fucking do anything today. Just, just leave me the fuck alone. You know, it's it is. <laughs> that's why, like, I'm I'm laughing at people who are like, oh. I hate working from home. You're like, guy, that's the home that you chose. You're like, if you don't like it, you got to make some changes in your life, right? So, <laughs> it's kind of on you, yeah. Yeah, right? You're like, I hate my kids. Well, you're raising them, so that's kind of a you problem <laughs> forever, you know? <laughs> oh. I hate my children. Dude, I've heard so many people say that kind of stuff, and I'm like... Those are yours, man. Like you can't be like, oh, what everyone else has done. My yeah, kids are, turned out horrible. You're like, no, that's that's really just all you. It's are assholes. I am surprised. Like I, I've been trying to get this out of my mom for at least five years at this point. At any point, did you want to throw me or my sister in the dumpster? Like, like, did you hate us that much? Because she always made jokes about like when we were being annoying or whatever she's like i'm gonna take you back to the baby store and leave you there or whatever and mm -hmm. yeah I, I it sounded like it was in jest but part of me was like i bet she felt that for real a little bit at it's some just, point that's just that's funny a little to me. dark it's just funny <laughs> to me because it's like how do you want that conversation to go though like if i were to approach my mom and be like did you ever want to throw me in a dumpster what do i want her to say do i want her to be like oh yeah 100 percent. i fucking despise yeah, you from you're the worst 14 to 17 okay? Like, I was, what? <laughs> I just wanted to tell the truth. It's like the thing where, where, where no, you like, don't. I would, you definitely I would don't. Almost, I would almost appreciate, uh, like a commercial where they're just like, "We're Subway. We kind of suck, but we got like sandwiches in this strip mall. You want some?" Like, I feel like I would like that better than we're a healthy choice. Fuck you. I. It's so, hey, we're not covered in grease, but we're yeah. not much better. Yeah, Good exactly. Yeah. I would I would appreciate that more than what what they're doing, or like how Spotify's shuffle function isn't really a shuffle function. They don't because if it was truly random, you would get little stretches of like an artist going together, but they like move them apart. But at the same time, the shuffle is in the same order every time, so it's not really a shuffle. So yeah. I, I would just like it if it was actually shuffled every time, even though that's they're like we just didn't do that. Do you know what it took to get to the point we are right now with music, you bastard? Okay? <laughs> we had to record it off a radio at 3 o'clock in the morning, hoping that the DJ that was playing it wasn't an asshole, and in the middle of the stop, it go, hey guys, this is 93.4 uh, FM, and we're just uh, chilling in the middle of the night, yeah, enjoy the song, okay? And you're like, fuck that guy, ruined so many tapes of mine, okay? Generation. You have no idea, yeah. you should just enjoy it, yeah. I do. There, there are like God songs damn. that I taped off the radio that, like, for for to today, when I hear like when I hear the end of that song, I imagine the I hear in my mind the next song that was on that tape. <laughs> yes. Tape, and then that I turned because I turned it off from yeah. the radio, like uh, the oh, Iron Maiden song. It doesn't play. Time, yeah, I. I no, but it like it, you know, would end and and then uh fucking the Doobie Brothers, the the China Groves yeah. and the So I hear that in my head at, at the end of uh Wrathchild every time. Because of the mixtape you made or just like when you... Well, it wasn't a mixtape I made, it was me taping it off the radio. Yeah. And that happened to be the next song they played. So I hit stop, you know, stop yeah. taping it. 
but you could hear like the very beginning. Every time I went oh. back and listened to it, you could hear the very beginning of it. Got it. And I- in our day, people <laughs> didn't wait for a song to finish. They would mix in the next song yeah. and it would just continuously play, which was more so just to screw up people like us who would tape it off the radio because it's like, I'm not paying for this shit. I'm just going to record it off the radio. What do I give a yeah. shit? <laughs> kidding me? That was the lap of luxury. <laughs> I can imagine um, that it makes it kind of awkward, like, because, you know, what if you're trying to make, like, a mixtape to set a mood or something, and, like, you put it in, you got, like, some love songs <laughs> on there, and then, like, right, like, in the middle of, like, an intense moment, you just, you're like, coming back to you live once again from 93.5 FM, <laughs> we got a big old traffic update for you, there's a big massive five-car collision on the I-97 headed northbound, three people I, have been confirmed to be killed so far. And then it goes into the next track, I've been really trying, baby. So like, one of our <laughs> that we lost on the I-95, here's Led Zeppelin's Stairway to Heaven. <laughs> I had a friend yeah. who news turned on the radio and was news breaking about OJ uh, being chased down the floor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. And I was like, and I told him like, really, you just turn on the radio for that? He goes, yeah, man, it's cool. And I'm like, yeah. mm, that's a bad idea like that. Who knows what's it going to play? And that played, he's like, listen, I don't know what kind of wizard you are, but because of you, he goes, you know how often that, nev- that never had an issue? And as soon as you said it, boom. OJ on the radio. That kills the mood, man. That kills the mood a lot. Yeah. yeah. Or, or God forbid, it would just be like Norm McDonald doing all of his weekend update shit where he's like ripping into OJ for like years straight. <laughs> Wouldn't be surprised. No. Oh, man. May he rest in peace. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, Norm, wild. not OJ. Yeah, <laughs> OJ's still alive. No, right? like OJ's paid his his dues. <laughs> he paid for his crime, I guess. I don't know. Did, didn't he go to jail something? later for something? He went to jail yeah. later for like breaking into someone's hotel room. Oh, okay. uh, it's someone that had maybe stolen some shit from him, and he was. Mm-hmm. I, I, the you story is very that fuzzy. he was stealing back. That he had sold um, or something weird, yeah, it was, yeah, it was something like it was. It was very fuzzy. Yeah, why is it that uh, when Norm someone... McDonald actually added a joke about it on one of the specials? <laughs> Let's go around and share our favorite OJ Simpson moments. I'll go first. <laughs> <laughs> There's this one where he's like doing like a TV interview, like after like the trial and stuff. Yeah. And they're talking about like, do you have any like any remorse or anything like that? You know, it's like a normal interview. And then after the interview, OJ to the anchor is like, I got, I got a surprise for you. I got something I want to show you. And she was like, okay. And so like she's in this room, and then OJ like knocks on the door of the room, and they open the door, and then he just like lunges at her like this, <laughs> like he's gonna stab her. That's messed up. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, uh... look, man, we're. You got away with it, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Don't fucking bring it up. Yeah. If I did it, fuck you. That's that, a. That is one of the greatest. Well, if I did do it, this is how I would have been. You're like, what? Who thought? Like, this is it's that is peak like my childhood where other people would be like, yeah, man, that'll be cool if you do it. Then you do it, and you're like, this wasn't cool. I'm an idiot. And you know that your friend's got one on you? That's what someone was like, yeah, hey, you know you should do, man? You should write a book and say, if I did, because, you know, we all know you didn't. And it's like, okay. It kind of reminds me of, like, when you would get, like, oh, did you did you knock over the vase in the living room? And you're like, no, but if I did do it, what I, what I would do is ride my tricycle in the house, even though I wasn't supposed to, <laughs> and then hit it on the way through. And, but I didn't, so it's fine. And they're like, you're grounded. You're like, yeah, figured. Can't wait for the uh, Elaine Maxwell book to come out. Hypothetically, if I had a sex ring. <laughs> <laughs> if I did kill Jeffrey Epstein. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, turns out she's the brain. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Why is it that when like someone like rich or famous goes, like when, when they eventually do go to jail, it's always like some nickel and dime shit. Like yeah. Al Capone with, with the tax evasion. Stuff like that. Like um you know what's why? her face elizabeth uh, uh, elizabeth holmes with the defrauding the rich people instead of defrauding the poor people like stupid shit like that yeah because it's um, easier to pin down financial crimes than it is to because that, that's the only reason they got capone dude is because yeah, like taxes they couldn't pin down anything else but they, they could get him on the taxes 
Okay, That's why, but, like, the IRS has all those, like, clauses yeah. and stuff. Like, there's one where, like, even if you make money illegally, you have to report it, which is, like, why the fuck is that in there? That's stupid. Listen, but the reason listen, it's in I'll, there is I'll, because I'll, they can prosecute you if you don't. I'll explain what happened. There was a time, okay, when only cool people got to make cool decisions and have cool things happen, okay? Then you have <laughs> losers who are like, no, you guys don't invite us, so now you're going to have, so now, okay, all you have these losers are going to rain on cool people's parade. And now, in a revolt, you have people who we thought were cool have gone too far, and they're crazy. That is the that is essentially history of the entertainment industry. Okay? I feel like Dino thinks of himself as a cool person. I don't know. But none I of the three of us are cool. We're all we're all not is, cool. Like yeah, but I'm also like a foreigner. One of the cool people in this. No, story. he's one of the ones that went too far. You're like okay. you know he went too far. He's a monster, right? Or like okay. Uh, Every so, bad guy is also a cool guy. Well, he was, and then he went too far. Yeah. So like they lived long enough to become the villain. No. OJ, cool guy. What isotoners? Great glove. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, we got a lot of commercials with this one guy that we cannot use anymore. What yes. I remember is because uh, you know there used to be there was that uh, commercial OJ did. What was it for luggage or something I, for the Samsonite luggage? This was no, back was in the seventies. The... No, no, this no, is because different. the commercial was OJ running through the airport. You know, oh, to catch Caleb, I don't plane. remember this to you. <laughs> and well, he's, he's like the seventies, so I wasn't yeah. even yeah. like you and me he's are, like dodging yeah. and and to, oh. and so when when you know the. They were chasing him in the Ford Bronco down the 405. They said, oh, he's heading towards LAX. Like, that's how I thought it was all going to resolve, was him, like, running through the airport, dodging oh my the God. police and all. It ended up being oh. pretty anticlimactic compared to that. <laughs> like, he just does that, and then it turned out to be one long commercial for it. <laughs> <laughs> that, that would be a great, yeah. That, now, now that's some viral marketing there. You can't buy that kind of. That's top tier. Yeah. If OJ strikes again, there's definitely going to be like a Gatorade ad of him <laughs> just like Same sprinting. <laughs> I think my favorite. I'm keep OJ those electrolytes up. <laughs> Gatorade. I, for, I forgot what sketch show it was, but he was on a sketch show where he plays a used car salesman and he's trying to sell a Ford Bronco with bullet holes in it. <laughs> I swear oh. to God, this is real. It's like, dude. <laughs> You know what, though? Like if, you it reminds away, me... if you get away with murder, just shut the fuck up about it for the rest of your life. You know? I, yeah, but like that's it's the same as like an edgy comic that killed once and is like, I'm going to keep going with the same bit because I got away with it once. I'm going to keep going. You're like, hey, man, it worked once. You got to stop. <laughs> and then they just keep on going. You know? Something, yeah. something. Here's your sign. You might be a redneck, right? <laughs> yeah. That's it. <laughs> Let's so see. Wait. Weird. Well, it's it, Pawn it, it, Stars. It was Pawn Stars. That's when he did it. Pawn uh, Stars. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know. <laughs> don't chase Simpson. Um, you guys believe did you, in God? Apparently, there was. Like, <laughs> what did you say? Do you believe what? in God? <laughs> you guys, do you guys believe in God? Oh my God, Caleb. <laughs> I don't know. Are you buying or selling? That's the real question. <laughs> Pawning, actually. Pawning. <laughs> I, I believe in, in the holy Ford Bronco with bullet holes in it. Uh, <laughs> all right. No, I, I don't. Um, <laughs> I don't know how to answer that. Okay, here's a better question. It's so weird. For some okay. reason. <laughs> hey, do you believe in God? What the fuck? Who's, who asked that question in that? He, it's 2021, man. Are you crazy? It's first off, Dino, it's 2022. And two, whatever. <laughs> it's still 2019 for me, okay? Yeah. I haven't been outside the house. Yeah. I am on day 22 of no cigarettes. I will kill nonstop, okay? All right, All right. so Dino's a no. Hey, that's a no. That's a, <laughs> seriously, good, good on you for. You almost oh, got it. You horrible. almost made it a month. That's awesome. It's hard. Props to you, though, man. I, I can't do it, dude. You smoke too? Yeah, because you're I, weak. I'm so weak. Look at my frail body. Look at my translucent I, skin. And tell me that I have willpower. No, I didn't think. I, I didn't think any young people smoked anymore. Is that still oh me? well. Here's the thing: it's not cigarettes. It's Eight. these little oh. USB sticks with fruit juice inside of them. <laughs> uh, if it was fruit juice, that'd be awesome, though. 
Kyle it basically is. is. <laughs> no, but it's not. You're like, dude, that that shit is not okay for you. Okay, like, look, I I would smoke a cigarette. Okay, I might cough. You vape for a couple days, and you're like, it's like when you breathe, it bubbles out. You're like, there's not, this is not healthy. Like, look at this shit, dude. It's red apple or mango <laughs> ice or peach fuzz. Like, it's so fun. Like, cancer is just so awesome. It's <laughs> such a good time, don't you guys? That third one was it? named after Caleb's pubes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so. It, so is the cigarette industry just transitioned to like selling yeah, yeah. on vaping? Okay, all right. Yeah, because I've seen a bunch. And they're of pretending like, that it's healthy when there's really just not enough. Like I've tried to vape and it's just not as satisfying, right? I, but... I've seen a bunch of commercials for anti vaping, and my favorite one is it's this it's this black guy and he's on a basketball court and he's like vaping can put uh, nickel in you know nickel and iron into your lungs. That's metal. In your lungs, and that's it. That's the. End oh of the yeah, I've seen. I saw that one today, yeah. dude. I see that one at least like twice a day. I just imagine him. He's like. That's a great commercial. He just raids the entire periodic table. That's magnesium in your lungs. <laughs> <laughs> that's neon, which is actually not that harmful because it's because it's a noble gas in your lungs. Bromide. <laughs> Bromide. <laughs> no, but it's. Bromide's Cheers to that guy. It's, not, it's, it's very, very weird. Caleb, no, that, bad. That's being promoted, right? Yeah. What about? Are you a dragon when you uh, vape, Caleb? Am I a dragon when I vape? Yeah, when it's like, <laughs> when it's like just a massive amounts of smoke. Here's the thing: when I first started vaping, absolutely, because okay. I had like one of those like chug mods, dude, like one of like yeah. the big ones that you had to, like put in a backpack to transport around. Yeah. Oh my god! Like the big old tank, and I'd like. Do like it sounds like I'm trying to like <laughs> suck up a Slurpee through a boba straw or something, and then I would oh just like God. blow it out the nose and the sides of my mouth because it looks so edgy and cool. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Yeah. My favorite thing to do when I smoke weed is a cartoon character who swallowed a bomb and then it explodes and then the smoke comes out of your mouth and go, and then it leaks out. Nice. <laughs> I'm I, I'm insane. <laughs> Atlas is super fun at parties, dude. Totally. I'm the guy who brings the guitar. No, I. <laughs> Oh. Is there any way to make that guy cool? There's no way to make that guy cool. Yeah, this thing. Don't, don't bring a guitar yeah. to a party. No not. one wants to hear the guitar. Yeah. We've got the music. There's music playing. Yeah. Are you playing? Yeah. You're going to play guitar over the music? Or are you going to tell everyone, stop the music? I want to, I'm going to play fucking Caleb, Caleb. cats in the cradle or whatever. Guys, I get it. Cats just cool. But listen, I, I just <laughs> left Stairway to Heaven last night. I just well, learned the first, it. The first part of it, but not the not the cool part. Just come on, the... Denise, come sit over here. Uh. Come sit next to me on the couch, dude. I just put a fresh stick of deodorant on. Come on, Denise, this is cool. <laughs> Adam, where are you going? Sorry, I'm just reliving some like repressed memories right now. It's oh, like... okay. <laughs> A anyway, here's Wonderwall. It's like I feel so bad. <laughs> I feel so bad for Oasis for like the they were so like hip in the '90s, and then they just got turned into that meme. And yeah, that's it. Like, <laughs> you know what, man? I lived it. It was awesome. I don't give a shit. Okay, <laughs> it was so fucking. With each other. It was so yeah, fucking cool. Cut, yeah. and it thing, was the coolest. Okay. The only thing I really remember about Oasis is like the one time they were. I guess. Uh, wait, which one's the the singer? Liam or. No, I the no. Other whatever the fuck. No, I don't know. Yeah, one's an fucking... asshole and one's less of an asshole. That's They're it. both assholes. His, but his, he was he had laryngitis or something, so he couldn't sing. They were on tour, so yeah. uh, Liam was singing all the songs, and Noel was just like sitting on a stool, smoking cigarettes and glaring <laughs> at the audience. Are you which, fucking serious? Which is which fucking was, cool. Super that's fucking cool. Amazing. Like, yeah, I love yeah. that. Which that's, that actually seems like a more pure expression of Oasis and Noel yeah. singing. Yeah, oh my absolutely. God. And and you know what? And I smoked. That makes me and him exactly the same. Exactly totally the cool the guy. Same. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, that's how that works. Yeah, Dino's a really cool guy, and in about three years, he's going to commit homicide. That's how it works. Yeah, yeah. I haven't already. Cool guy club. <laughs> I love the idea of both of you guys being so addicted to nicotine that my terrible voice combined with you guys 
having your lungs eroded. It's just that welcome to Generation Day, and I'm Caleb McDuff. Yeah. <laughs> so start opening the podcast with just like two of these in my nose and like one. No, of these no, in my no. Mouth. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh. That's so bad. I, I will come it. to Denver and I will spank your ass with a fraternity paddle. No. Don't punch me with a good time. <laughs> yeah. And I guess there's not really a good way to punish a Zoomer like that, where they're just going to be like, spank me, daddy. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so weird. Flip those gender norms on their heads, sir. Yes. <laughs> Woo. I'm ready. I'm young. I'm excited. <laughs> Hit me. Come on. It, on, it, only goes it only goes downhill from here. You'll be fine. <laughs> Do you know, you, earlier in the episode, you were talking about how like history repeats itself with like Wall Street yes. being a thing in the 20s and then uh, crypto now you have bros. Bitcoin. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was thinking of an idea for like a Hallmark movie, like a shit Hallmark movie, where it's a crypto bro and his son doesn't want to be a crypto bro. Yeah. <laughs> Seems totally accurate. I don't He's want like, my NFT, dude. Dad. I want Bro. a four hundred one k. Like, yeah, yeah, it seems accurate. This is, wanna... this, this is the weird thing: is every generation revolts against the previous generation. That's just how life works. The funny part is that now we're just trying to figure out weird shit to revolt against, right? Like my generation is like, you know what? I'm gonna be happy. I'm gonna be happy with the life I have. That's a yeah. great. That's a great way to revolt because I'm like, I know old people that are fucking sad as shit. And I'm like, no, I'm breaking the mold by being happy and conscious of my emotional situation and my mental health. But that now you have Caleb who's sucking on fucking four vapes at a time going, I need one more and a piercing right through my dick. Like, what? <laughs> Why is that? That's not, you're not revolting. You're going backwards. I need when a new hole to vape from. When, yeah. when, when, you, when you blow through it, it sounds like a slide whistle. <laughs> <laughs> Now I just picture Caleb at a coffee house trying to pick up chicks, and all of a sudden it's like, <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> the genius whistle wasn't me. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. When no you get whistle your dick here. Pierced, where where does it get pierced? Like if the... anywhere you want, dude. Oh my god. <laughs> anywhere you want. Your, your imagination is the limit. No. God damn it. It's like what do you want? You want studs? You want a bar? You want a hoop? You want a you want a ring? What? Usually when someone says your imagination is the limit, they mean like having a chalkboard be a wall in your room. It Not you're where you your get your dick into pierced. hoops. I have a chalkboard in my room and I use it to plot where I want my piercings. Oh, okay. All right. Where did the tattoo artist stab you? Right there. From my wiener. It's like an anatomically yeah. correct doll, and I just point at it, and I'd say, that's where you want. I, that's where I want you to touch me. Disgusting. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> so bad. Oh, Guys, I don't know where my brain's at today. I'm going to apologize in advance to the viewers at home. Uh, I, I, I'm having a great time. This is hilarious. <laughs> I've been watching a lot of... Um, inked shorts uh like they have these little interviews and stuff of tattoo artists that are are famous which i'm like i don't have any tattoos i always wanted a tattoo couldn't mm -hmm. think of a good tattoo to have because i'm like yeah that's forever and i really don't trust my judgment <laughs> like not at all <laughs> so, yeah. yeah that's something i can live and die by <laughs> no that's mm -hmm. what is it tuesday no definitely not uh <laughs> So, like, now I'm watching, like, people who are like, oh, you know, I'm not really into face tattoos. And they have their beard, their entire beard has tattoos, like that area. Mm -hmm. And they're tattooed all through their scalp. But this area, okay, no tattoos. And they're like, yeah, I'm not into face tattoos. I'm like, guy, you got head tattoos. <laughs> that is not a better situation to have, right? And it's like, <laughs> like the you know, everything like but of face tattoos, right? No, but look, I grew up, if somebody had a face tattoo, that person killed and will kill again. And you yeah. might be on that list if you piss them off, okay? Now people are like, oh, yeah, I have this, this scenery of raindrops through my face to show my emotional stability and how I gained it when I was 21. You're like, what the fuck is that? I thought the, the, the raindrops was like when you killed someone. That it is. The... That's why it doesn't okay. make any fucking sense anymore. <laughs> I'm going to replace my eyebrows with cool guy. <laughs> what cool guy that yeah, like, cool guy the, uh, can you spell it with a k and the g has to be a j okay 
<laughs> so it'll be like cool jai. Cool jai? Yeah. What am I, a jam band? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. It's, life is changing constantly. Life is changing, dude. I just gotta post up in a coffee shop with my face tats and I can pick up some cool Libra girls. Oh, cool. by the what way. Girls? Libras, Libra. dude. Oh. The, I find it very entertaining that uh, people's uh, mm, certain people's focus on uh, star signs and that kind of stuff, yeah, has, is a constant. People are idiots. Every generation, dude. I messed <laughs> like, up. I messed up when it comes to that stuff because so okay. So speaking of tattoos, so I got this when I was still in law school. <laughs> oh, no. You can see it. It's got like the the, the badge yeah. and like the scales of justice and stuff. Obviously, that's not panning out anymore. Yeah. So I had to think of a new excuse for why I have scales on my arm, and I just tell people it's a star sign thing. <laughs> uh, are you actually a Libra? Or no, no, I'm not. Oh my god, no. Okay, are you looking for a Libra though? Then that's... I could be. Uh, sure, I mean I'm branded, so I might as well. You know, <laughs> the. <laughs> The lesson here is get the tattoo after you finish the thing. Hey, what about those ones that only show up under black light? Are those, is that like cancerous or anything? Or is it? That's cum, you know, that's cum. It's not semen. What are you talking about? No, it's, uh, it shows up under a black light and, and they put the it as tattoo, a tattoo. The tattoo yeah. shows up under a black light? Yeah, there's, that. there's, it's that, but people aren't doing it. I'm like, I assume it just causes cancer or like gives you. That some seems sort of... like it probably would, right? As many I don't things know. as cause cancer, it would be kind of crazy if getting fluorescent dye injected into your skin didn't. My bed's got some super cool tattoos. You can only what? Light. No, 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 no. Oh, we... <laughs> <laughs> That's so gross. <laughs> when I was a kid, like. Seven or eight, my dad, for funsies, replaced the light in my bedroom with a black light. And I was like, why? And he's like, "He's a, it, it's a black light. It's cool. I'm like, I can't see anything. It, it doesn't do light well. Like, I want to be able to see. Yeah. Suddenly you had epilepsy. Yeah. There you go. That's how no. that works. <laughs> no, but I, I'm, I'm just thinking, like, God, that would be would have been terrible if he did it while I was going through puberty. And I figured out what a black light does. Yeah. Oh, that I I dodged a bullet. Before, no good, no good could come from. Yeah, no yeah. good could come from that. Yeah, that could have gone so wrong. <laughs> Whatever, dude. I'm just gonna shoot ropes on a canvas and sell it to a museum. That oh, I feel like that's you put the it on the black NFT. light, and then you get like the cool like transition. Then you turn the black light off, and then it's just plain. It's almost like a uh, it, it's an expression piece. I like it. I, yeah. See that's the, the new NFT. Chris knows what I'm talking about. Hidden that, art. It's yeah. the NFT of your generation. Uh, we already have NFTs. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah but you guys cool. are moving so fast because you guys are so cool, fucking losers. <laughs> Whatever. I'm, try I'm trying to make a pun off of like cum and Jackson Pollock. It's very hard. Uh, <laughs> Jackson. Uh, Jackson Pollock. Jackson. Pollock. Jackson okay, Jackson Pollock. Pollock. Jackson Pollock. That's another good one. Ooh. <laughs> Jack and pull zip. Yeah. I don't know. Ah! There's something in there. Bam! I broke Dino. <laughs> no, I just said I'm. I just thought to myself, it's like you know what? I came up with a really good subject, and we wasted it on filth, absolute filth. And yeah. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. <laughs> uh, I feel like it's a it's the perfect uh, you know. But a just... yeah, we I'm wasted like, it. Okay. <laughs> it's great. No, because it's fine. It's it's hilarious that like yeah, you know what? You know what's always gonna be funny? Dick and fart jokes. <laughs> like that's just how it works. Always. Sorry. It's like you yeah. can't. You just and the, my wife loves puns, and I'm like, you're a horrible human being for that. Like I yeah. craft humor out of nothing. That's what I. That's what I do for a living on a daily basis. And you like puns? Hey, Disgusting. you know what? Abraham Thank Lincoln you know? was into puns. And he's Abraham fucking Lincoln, so take that. And he died. He died. Okay, that's what Every, happened to him. Do you know everyone's gonna die? Caleb's the one. Not who's like that. He's immortal. Not you. It... You you think Abraham Lincoln was assassinated because he liked puns? Yes. Okay. I I feel like that was definitely a reason for it, as opposed to a reason why it shouldn't have happened. You know, it wasn't the frame the slaves part. It was that he liked puns. That was the. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, well, not totally. 
not totally, but I feel mm-hmm. like it was a contributing factor. <laughs> We're like, hey, <laughs> he likes puns, and be like, oh fuck that guy. Bang. He's a big, yeah. big. Uh, you know, they're they're not they're not popular in the southern states at all. In puns. <laughs> <laughs> they are really. That's it. Yeah. It's, they don't go in for that kind. It's of a thing. Venn diagram that goes over surprisingly a lot. It's, you know, they cover up each other. Slavery, puns. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say it. The Zoomer did. I don't know what you're talking about. So. <laughs> Chris, you're from the South, right? Is that really a thing with the? More or less. the... No. <laughs> no, I'm just making a humorous oh. uh, uh, statement. That would be funny though if it, if it was literally like this motherfucker. Who got on, you Yankees like, who, coming yeah. down here with your fucking puns. Yeah. <laughs> that seems accurate, though. Have you ever been to a show where it was um, all just like dry, plain, plain white people? And you're like, this is not funny. This is not funny at all, right? It's just, you know, it's just, come on. And that's where pun humor came from. Let's be honest. That's definitely, <laughs> that is historically accurate. I, we were like, I, oh, he made a funny sound. I'm not sure I've ever seen a comedy show where it's just plain white people. Is that rough? Like I'm Greek and I'm like, I'm thankful that that means I have culture and I have rhythm and I'm like, I'm good. I'm, I'm, you know, that's fair. But uh, yeah, I know I've been to a couple of those shows and I'm like, Ooh, this is way too many white people. It's just not (laughs) just dry. Like toast. Can't handle it. Hey, Southern people. I got a pun for you. Waffle house. More like awful house. Hey, yo. That's some good shit. Still not a pun, but okay. He tried. Waffle House is terrible. I <laughs> said it. I said it. I just it's love that. Wa- I, I love how That's there like is a, a literal Waffle House. There's an index for how bad a natural disaster is based on whether or not the Waffle House is still open. <laughs> it's liter- It's called the Waffle House index, and it's real. Like I, I have heard of that. That's crazy. Yeah. Thing. The that waffles seems fair. Is just like what tornado? Eh, come have some grits. It's fine. Like, open twenty four hours. Yeah. I've been once or twice when I was in the states to a Waffle House, and I'm like, it was a greasy spoon, and I'm like, yeah, okay, yeah. This is I didn't feel spoon. like I was gonna get shot, but also I look like an ogre, so people I ran away say, when I came. I, it's fine. I really miss like a lot of the diners in LA are just kind of going away uh, yeah. with this pandemic, and I really miss that. Cause like I I sometimes I just want to get a sloppy Joe and now it's like a pop up restaurant that serves the uncouth Joseph and it's like <laughs> I just I just want to go in there with my uh, and and just read a book or something at like two in the morning can I do that yeah, I feel yeah. like the sloppy Joe could also be named the Jackson Pullet ah, <laughs> there it is Jackson Pullet yeah. the Jackson pulled pork. Yeah, that makes well, sense. We have this. That was going. that was quality. We have this game going in my group chat right now, where you're trying to take like, you know, shitty food and just make it sound bougie. So like uncouth. I did that as a or bit. Swine in a duvet or that kind of thing. I you did, did that a, as a bit. Yeah, it was. Uh, uh, now we have a nut puree with a grape uh, relish uh, served on a brioche bun. Yeah, it's just peanut butter jelly, jelly sandwich, fucker. Good one. Just, That's good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's I have it recorded somewhere. I'm like, yeah, just this is the thing is like this new generation is put a name on everything and make sure you put everything, every drop of soul and fire that you have into that fucking name. And it's like, hey, you know what? Not everything's five stars, man. Get over it. <laughs> three stars. You are I am living a three, sometimes two and a half star existence. You know why? Because that is an average. I don't sleep at a five. It's not. Right. It's ridiculous. Your name I have sleep apnea. I never sleep like, with a five. Yeah. Moons over my hammy. Yeah. Boom. Good name. Yeah. Rudy a... Tootie, fresh and fruity. Good name. Bam. Yeah, if anything, I'm like, what is it? My birthday? Sure, Cash I'll get that. Like, covered, that's fair. Scuttered, scrattered, and whatever. Good yeah. name. Listen, there's on that point with regards to the the diners atlas that was mm-hmm. happening up here and like then new places start to open up and there was one that does a french toast that's dipped in uh rice or cheerios as well so it's like in the batter on the french toast is covered in cheerios and i'll tell you it's what they serve in heaven at their buffet brunch 
like 100%. Oh, okay? okay. It is delicious. I but at the it same time, turn out like you were like, fuck you or something. Oh, no, no, no. You it's one of the know. greatest things I've ever yeah. tried in my life. But at the same time, it's $27. You're like, listen, okay? <laughs> it's bread, <laughs> egg, and Cheerios. Go fuck yourself. Okay? There is, a, there, I believe there is a place in Pasadena that's a French toast, which is in like a, a batter of uh, cornflakes. Yeah, cornflakes. Uh, there was another one that did Rice Krispies. And you're like, yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm down with and that. Like, that sounds oh, good. It's, it's it's fantastic, but at the same time, like, okay, that's that's a that's an event. It's like, oh, we're meeting people. Hey, they're only free in the morning. Let's get brunch. It's a one time thing every day. What am I, the <laughs> fucking king? Are you crazy? That's this is why everyone's just celebrating with so much. Where you're like, ah, oh, everything has to have a cool name and everything. Let's calm down. Relax, How about this? Yeah. Eggs and bacon. That's it. Just eggs and bacon. Maybe some toast and some butter. That's all I need. Yeah. It doesn't have to be some fucking limerick that I'm going to have to remember until I'm 75. Going, that's what I used to get after. And that's the clubs, kids. Like, fuck yeah. off. It's like the people who put way too much, you know, work into their band name and their music is terrible. Like, for for a band like, <laughs> I don't know. Like, that's accurate. If you're, if, you're accurate called, if you're called Toad the Wet Sprocket, your music better be fucking good. And it's true, like, but uh, but I also feel the opposite. Like I, like if your band name is no good, then I'm like, well, if, if they can't come up with a better band name than what some forty one or whatever, I'm like, why yeah. why would I give their some music a chance? Blink one eighty two. What was with like the nineties and two thousand? Yeah, there was like. Yeah. yeah, the Matchbox Twenty. <laughs> right, they yeah. they all came out like right around the same time in the late nineties. Yeah. Elbow forty six. Yeah, but some of them did have whatever. cool music too, right? Yeah, that's and a tough one. That means I, they did their job. <laughs> well, this is the thing. Like, uh, one of the one of the big uh, comedians up uh, in Toronto is uh, Sean Cullen, who uh, is is hilarious. Okay, but he had Corky and the Juice Pigs at the same time, and it's it's honestly, if you just Google Corky and the Juice Pigs or Sean Cullen, Sean Cullen music, you will piss your pants laughing. Okay, because it's not only is it charismatic when you listen to it, but the mm -hmm. lyrics are piss your pants funny where you're like, like one of them is called Eskimo. And it is number one, Eskimo, you're not allowed to say anymore. It's Inuit. That's mm -hmm. number one. And they just brazenly said it. But then as well, it's a song about uh, the fact that this guy is the only gay Eskimo in his tribe. And it is fucking hilarious. Okay. But that's, you're like, yeah, that's fucking hilarious. Like, that that is something that will keep on giving forever. But when you know which one was Hootie, I don't know. It's very, very confusing. <laughs> I'm assuming whichever one was blowing the fish. Yeah, <laughs> it's not Hootie blowing the fish. It's Hootie and the blowfish. Nah, whatever. I just feel bad for like the people in bands like that, where or they're the and the something. And now they like they go up to women in bars and they're like, "Hey," and they're like, "Who are you?" And they're like, "I'm I'm one of the blowfish." Yeah, <laughs> it's not not very cool, you know. As That's opposed it. to going like I'm Hootie, you know, or I'm 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 Dave Matthews's band. You're Dave Matthews. No, I'm in Dave Matthews's band. I'm gonna start opening with I'm a blowfish to people. <laughs> I'll come back to you with detailed statistics. In about I don't think time. you should introduce yourself as a blowfish to people. That sounds well. It also very it sexual. Like you, you might <laughs> yeah. be saying I'm going to blowfish. I'm a blowfish. Oh, uh, hey, what's up, girl? Trying to get out of here and blow fish. <laughs> like so, I gotta a, go. I gotta, <laughs> I, I'm a blow fish. There's something like that where, like, th there's an ophthalmology office in LA called the Diamond Vision Institute, and it, it when written, my brain turns it into not a Diamond Vision Institute. It's Diamond Vision Institute. Like, it can give you the superpower to shoot diamonds out of your eyes, and. Uh, I, I'm kind of bummed out that that's not what it is. Diamond vision. Yeah. That would be, that, that seems like something they would have in Beverly Hills. Yeah. Like, you come into this clinic and get the power to shoot diamonds oh, out of your eyes. I don't think diamond vision is shoot diamonds. I think it's more so you end up having bug eyes. Like it's one of those kaleidoscopes, but your Maybe. eyeballs. Because that I'm would be more diamond, you know, diamond you vision, not as good as normal vision. Ooh, I'm surprised do. there's not a clinic called Laser Vision, and then all of the art in the offices is just the doctors shooting fucking lasers out of their eyes. It should, yeah, be. but that'd be awesome, right? <laughs> yeah, 
That's oh, every God. time. Every time I go to the doctor, I'm like, "Hey, do they have any sort of way for me to get uh, laser eyes or you know, like a robot body?" And he's like, "No." I'm like, "All right, I'll check I'll, in next time." I'll do, check do you accept I, Bitcoin? I, I asked, and I literally will ask that every time. I went for. Uh, I, we talked about it a few weeks ago. Was uh, I went and got uh, had surgery. And while I'm in surgery, I'm like, guys, while I'm out, uh, if you feel that there's a way that you can give me superpowers through the surgery, you don't need consent. I'm giving it to you right now. By all means, go for it. And she's just looking at me going, okay. So superpowers, if possible, yes. I'm like, there you and go. Then, that's you that's how up, you. And then you wake up blind and they're like, you're a daredevil. And you're like, <laughs> <laughs> it's a loophole, bro. Oh, my God. Why is that? So, why would you say that? <laughs> so you know now I sold them on the black market. You're daredevil now. Good luck. So now, now you know not to do that. That's uh, like you gotta go superpowers except for daredevil. Don't make me daredevil. I want you to clip this out of the actual episode because I'm gonna use this as a bit. Yeah. <laughs> I said somebody, I'm like, you know, it's a funny joke that I'm like, hey, if I can get superpowers, it'd be great. <laughs> He's like, you woke up blind and you're daredevil. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> okay, you want me to actually? Okay, I'll, I'll edit this part out of the episode. Yeah. Okay. All it's right. It's a great fucking bit. I'm it's taking all it for you. All right. Oh um, God. All right. Well, Chris, thank you so much for coming on Generation <laughs> Dan. Um, we don't one more question for him, but first, where okay. can people find you and follow you and all that stuff? Oh, Jesus. Uh, I'm Chris Wood Oliver on Twitter. I'm well, I, whatever I logged in with here on, on Facebook, you just have to search Chris yeah. Oliver. I'm yeah, I'm out there. You can find me. I'm at a uh, Dow Comedy Studio. Uh, that's where we're at. We do a show every Saturday, we got open mics through the week. We got comedy workshops taught by Bobby Oliver, author of The Tao of Comedy. Uh, so the... come and check out. <laughs> I just imagine her standing off screen being like, are you going to... Hey, hey. <laughs> Tell them the rest. Uh, you, can, you can find us at Generation Dan on Twitter. Uh, yeah, and at new episodes of this thing come out every Thursday. So that's cool. Dino, how about you? Oh, yeah, I'm at Dino the Genetic Marvel. If you follow me on Facebook, uh, I usually post everything there, uh, so you'll see a copy of it. Or as well, I'm on Generation Dan and the DNT Network and Eargasm and all sorts of fun places. But yeah, mostly if it's on my my Facebook fan page or my Facebook comedy page, I don't even say fan, fan page. It really seems obnoxious, right? So my Facebook comedy page, Dino the Genetic Marvel. That's where you'll find everything. Nice. Uh, you can find me at Atlas Novak, uh, like this thing, on uh, on Twitter, Instagram, or you can follow my other podcast at Nexus at Night. That's my trading card name. It, so, yeah. Caleb? <laughs> uh, well, as of right now, I'm kind of a ghost from the internet, but I do have a Twitter account. It's at Caleb C. McDuff. Uh, there's nothing on there, so you won't find anything interesting. But when I do make my triumphant return to the internet with an exciting project that I'm announcing, eventually, uh, you'll be the first to know when it's there. So, Check that out. All right. It's definitely, definitely only fans. 100% only fans. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, I got to put the gym membership to work first. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, that being said, the final question we have for Chris is what is your most memorable set as a comic? Good, okay. bad, or weird? Okay. Uh, there was one set. This is early on. Um, yeah, just because I, I I got such a great reaction off of one uh, ad lib line, mm -hmm. um, so it was it was in the, the the small room of the the ice house, the the annex. They think they call it stage two now, um, and the guy who produced the show, someone in the show apparently worked at the Huntington Library. And so they had brought a bunch of employees from the Huntington Library in Pasadena uh, to, to watch. And, and this had come out from the previous comics, you know, doing crowd work or whatever. Mm -hmm. So when I w went up there, I said, uh, you know, first of all, I just want to say I love the Huntington Library. I love going there. All the employees are so helpful and everything. Uh, not like those fucking assholes at the Norton Simon <laughs> down the street. 
and so somehow that like that just got like the hugest applause break I've ever gotten in my entire life <laughs> was saying the Norton Simon Museum was a bunch of fucking ass. <laughs> Somewhere there's a like '80s movie where it's like a rival fraternity thing, but it's just about a li library employees. There's a script in there somewhere. Someone get on it. Let's I feel like that's that's how it actually happened. And they're like, no, no, we'll at the Huntington yeah. Library. <laughs> We're gonna stick it to them yeah. this year. Now you gotta go to Norton Simon and be like, hey, fuck you, and just leave. <laughs> <laughs> just feel like it's an odd existence working at a library and someone going you know what fuck you guys drink it's a library you idiot like, just to you? run in there Norton <laughs> simon museum rules <laughs> <laughs> what, what, like, what happened what's this this guy tp the library and it just was, like love <laughs> it's a big in town rivalry you know yeah. <laughs> the subway series <laughs> And the LA Public Library is just like, what are you guys doing? But... Oh, that's fantastic. All right. Well, thanks everybody for listening. All the all the stuff that we said earlier, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Night.